I basically just had an idea that I wanted to make a record that was about memory, family, love, and, and death, and the afterworld. My name is David Holmes. I am a DJ, music producer, a creator of soundtracks. So tonight is a celebration of Late Night Tales. It's a very Northern Irish album. You know, there's a lot of, you know, Stephen Ray, Documenta, Henry McCulloch, you know, um, other friends of mine who are very sort of connected to, you know, the trajectory, the story. So um, it was really important to me to do something in Belfast um, that was really Belfast, how I love it. And, and adore it, you know. We have BP Fallon, who, that was a very, that was an extraordinary experience because I just got a phone call out of the blue from BP and he said he was coming to Northern Ireland to go to the funeral of his dear friend, Henry McCulloch. Henry McCulloch is a legendary sort of guitar player from Northern Ireland. Um, he played with Paul McCartney and the Animals and Marianne Faithfull and, you know, just a whole sort of host of amazing people. He was the only Irish musician to play at Woodstock. And um, BP was heartbroken. And uh, he said, look, can I stay at your house? And I said, of course, you know, not, not a problem. So I picked him up from the train station and he, he said, look, if I come back from the funeral early enough, do you want to do something like in the studio? And I said, sure, you know, thinking that we weren't going to do anything. And so he went off to the funeral and I was just, you know, messing around on the piano in my living room. And I just started playing around with these chords that just felt like the beginning of something. And, uh, and I, then I you know, took the idea into my studio and got several different keyboards and, and the track just formed very, very quickly. So I texted BP and I said, look, if we're gonna do something, why don't we do something about Henry, you know? And uh, he said, you know, that's a good idea. And he came back that night and the only thing he had written was an outro, which was, my friend, the end, I know you're not coming back again. And I played him the music and like, he was really into it. And I, I just said, look, let's just put the headphones on. You know, we had a cup of tea, had a smoke, and I just put the headphones on, hit record, and he did what you hear on the album in one take. And it was extraordinary because what's extraordinary about that track and that moment is that we just, we, we, we caught something that could never have happened the day before, the day after, a week later, a month later. We just caught a moment and uh, it was just beautiful. And it was just, BP's memory for detail was just extraordinary. And I, I was actually deeply moved by the whole performance. And when you hear BP, you know, as he gets to the end of his performance, you can actually hear him like sort of like, you know, choking up. It was, it was really something. And we both just looked at each other and just went, wow, where did that come from? And then that, that's the track. Tears that I cry, tears of love, cried them for my darling wife up above. Never question why, who lives or dies, great spirit father. Father in the sky. I accidentally discovered Barry Wolnoy 
Spirit, uh, Spirit Father in the Sky, and Alan McLean, talking Judgment Day Blues, because my friend Andrew Weatherall and Nina Walsh have this beautiful label that just puts out limited edition seven inch. And I read somewhere that they were putting like a box set. You could only buy the box set. There was 300 copies of each of each. And I just bought it right away and it arrived and I was in the middle of the comp and I'm listening to these tracks and I'm going, oh my God, you know, because I know Barry's track is a very, very personal uh, track um, about the, the, the loss of his, of his wife. And Alan's track is, is, is just talking about, you know, what could possibly be waiting for us when we die. So lyrically, emotionally, the mood, my own taste, um, not only was I blown away by these tracks, but what they were talking about completely sort of blended in with what I was trying to say on this record. It was like a celebration of, of, of life and death and people that we love and sort of leave behind. But, you know, and that, that's a really difficult thing for me. I mean, it's a really difficult thing for anyone. Um, I've lost both my parents, I've lost my brother, I've lost, you know, friends. Um, close friends, uh, and that that never leaves you. And uh, but it's also a very cathartic experience to actually sort of put that into your art and into your music. And it feels, you know, just it feels good to be acknowledging them and not forgetting about them, and 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 and, and actually sort of, you know, and having something to show for it that is like a document um, of you know my feelings towards them and you know you, you leave something that's you know that exists and will exist long way after I'm dead. Document the Love as a Ghost is a track that I produced for my friend Joe Green and Without getting into sort of fine detail, I know what that song is about and I know what it means to him. And it's just a piece of work that I was really proud of. And I, again, I, I just felt that it fitted onto the record. When you're making records, for me, you gotta feel your way through them. You can't think your way through them. So when something sort of like an idea kind of presents itself or you hear something, it's, you just know, you know, sometimes you don't know exactly, but you just know it's a feeling, or it's a lyric, or it's a backstory. It's something that you know about this, um, you know, this song, this this piece of music that makes you feel something, um, and that's why it's on the on the record. the John Hopkins, Stephen Ray collaboration. I'd made this short film and a friend of mine, his name is Lola Roddy, he's a, an Irish actor. Most people will know him. He was in the movie, the Steve McQueen movie, Hunger. And he called it to my house one day and he says, oh, I want you to see this. And he had just finished doing a reading of, uh, from an extract from a book called Aeneid, book six by Seamus Heaney. And the extract, which we call Elsewhere in Cassie's, which is the track on the record, the story of that is about a, a man meeting his son in the, in the afterworld. And it was basically, he says, this is so like your film, you know? And I read it and I was like, I have to do this, you know? And uh, the John Hopkins track that we had collaborated on, it sat in my hard drive for like eight or nine years, unfinished just came to mind and suddenly it was like I have to marry this writing with this music and then I approached Stephen Ray who's a friend and another local Northern Irish uh, artist um, that I just thought was perfect for the voice of that and we got together and he came into my studio and you know that was there was a huge responsibility with that track because it was Seamus Heaney who is like you know um, an icon one of the great sort of poets of the 20th, 21st century. And also a, you know, a local Northern Irish, sort of very important kind of figure in the world of literature and poetry. 
So, you know, Stephen is very, very heavily connected to the Heaney family and is a huge fan of his work. So there was this huge responsibility of just getting that right for him and his family. This is what I imagined and looked forward to as I counted the days. And my trust was not misplaced.